let's try to pull it a little hard What's up YouTube? Welcome to the review of the 2020 Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 BS6 version. So this is the third day with the motorcycle and today I thought that I'll make the review. So it's been a wonderful ride. I was enjoying this motorcycle. So let's directly get into the review first. So I've been loving this engine a lot. Uh, since the launch itself, I've been loving this engine. It's a very practical engine. You can ride it in the city, ride it in the highway. It's very cool engine. It has ample and enough amount of power to overtake the usual traffic on the highway. So let's get into each and every bit of this motorcycle. So first of all to talk about the engine itself, this 650cc engine is not as aggressive as other 650 so it means that this is more beginner friendly. Uh, in fact if you are upgrading from a 150cc or a 300cc motorcycle this engine is not going to scare you a lot. It is more friendly but still you have a lot of fun to play with and uh, if you are upgrading from a scooter then probably I will say that the power is not at all a problem for you but the motorcycle itself is a little heavy. I will talk about those things later in this video but the motorcycle itself is a little heavy so you might find it a little difficult to uh, control the motorcycle otherwise power wise i don't find it that brutal and uh, the most attractive part of this motorcycle is the looks man it looks gorgeous in every angle i mean it's a very photogenic motorcycle uh, it has the retro feel uh, some people tell that uh, do we need the alloy wheels on this i'll i'll say that the it it will kill the looks i know that it's purposeful but it will kill the looks of this retro motorcycle and again to talk about the headlamps i'm okay with the throw which is it is giving i don't feel like needing a white light yeah let's get into this motorcycle and i'll explain you the feel of riding it so when you get on to the motorcycle the first thing what you will <laughs> feel is the heaviness of the motorcycle. It's a Royal Enfield. Royal Enfield are very famous for making heavy motorcycles. Uh, the good part is like it feels very sturdy in the cruise speeds. But the downside is like if you are not that well built, uh, you'll find a little bit of trouble in taking U-turns and uh, riding it in city. So when you sit on the motorcycle, the riding posture is not completely upright. If you see, this is my normal riding stance. My my hands wants to rest here, but this is like slightly sporty na not as sporty as a gt if you want a sporty riding posture the gt650 is the best choice that you can go for and the foot pegs are like almost right beneath where you sit one good thing about that is it's a nice riding ergonomics it's not forward set if it's forward set and you have a, a slightly more aggressive riding posture it doesn't tally that way so this foot peg is good but what i see is that you have to keep your legs a little wide you see that your leg is coming and interfering with the foot peg especially when you take this out of the parking lot okay i had serious problem in taking it out of the parking lot when you have to push it back so it's little heavy that's what i told if you know how to control the throttle turn it on and then take out the parking lot then okay good to go with so probably if you are a 150 cc and or a 300 cc and by now you know how to ride a motorcycle but if you come from a scooter it takes a little more time to get adjusted with the weight of the motorcycle so the riding ergonomics is perfectly fine and i forgot to mention about one of the beautiful thing about this motorcycle which is the exhaust sound so it's a uh, parallel twin engine 650 cc and it sounds brilliant this exhaust feels like a very big premium motorcycle you don't need an aftermarket exhaust if you put an aftermarket exhaust it will go loud but that sweetness goes off that premium feel will goes off <laughs> you just make it enormously loud that's all so my humble request is if you're buying this motorcycle try riding this motorcycle stock do not try to change the exhaust right away when you buy it and you have to consult with royal and feel before changing it because changing the exhaust requires change in your air filter then the ECU remap it's not a straightforward thing to go with that's what I want to say so to talk about the tires I'm not that happy about this tire so it takes a little more time to heat up uh, that's one problem and another thing is like it lacks wet grip and also the grip over the corners is also uh, it's okay but this motorcycle does serve a better pair of tires um, seriously if you're buying this motorcycle then uh, after the first set of tires you can go and uh, buy something more grippy the reason i'm telling this because uh, you can corner well on this motorcycle it dips more better i guess the tire is not holding it well so you need uh, definitely you need a better tire on this which anyway you can change it after the first pair if it runs for 15k or more than that then it's a good time you can learn on the motorcycle then you can start experimenting start pushing the limits of the motorcycle so with the engine it can go easily 130 140 the cruise speed is like 140 that's what i feel uh, but it's a naked motorcycle you see there is no wind visor so there is a lot of wind coming onto your chest and it, that makes you tired that's the problem uh, but 110 to 120 is like sweet i was that isn't a power band okay then the 6 gear around i think 3 to 3.5 k rpm yeah that is very low rpm in the 6 gear 
but still <laughs> the motorcycle doesn't have any knocking issues you just keep it on the highway very nice very nice exhaust sound zooms without any bells and whistles on the highways so, and if you want to push it then probably 140 is like an easy speed or uh, it can do a 150 also by 150 you have to tug down then uh, the kind of riding ergonomics this motorcycle needs has been all changed so when you tug down and all Uh, if you are looking for a more sporty uh, 650 then GT is the best choice okay i'm telling this for the second time because i love GT a lot the riding dynamics on the GT is too good uh, it feels more confident on high speeds like i have i think i have done 165 or, or even close to 170 once so that's a really nice speed so let's go for a ride uh before that i'll explain you what all things that you see over here this view is like awesome especially the kind of painting that they do in this angle very neat and clean the photos looks amazing <laughs> so over the handlebars all basics which is skill switch uh, ignition high beam and low beam pass switch indicator horn everything basic and when it comes to the dial also it's all basic like the twin dial one shows the speed and another shows the rpm you can see that uh, the rpm cuts at 7.5 k rpm which is pretty low when you consider a 650 cc sports motorcycle but when it comes to the cruiser yeah it's it's kind of okay the cruiser rpm is like 3 to 3.5 which is like very sweet so when you turn this on you have the fuel level indicator one odometer and if you press this there are two trip meters that's all so it's very basic things coming over it i would like to see a little more information on this especially a clock um, i i really don't want to check my mobile or my watch all the time so uh, having a clock over here will be a very nice feature and uh, it does come with a side stand indicator so i don't really need a side stand indicator here and the, the gear position indicator is also like subjective like if you're used to it then you need it if you're not used to it then it's okay So taking a U-turn is not a big deal. The seat height is low; it's not that tall and all. But as I told, the footprint is like a little more evident than other motorcycles. So that comes and hit your leg. That demands you to put your legs wide and sit on this motorcycle. See, it's very calm and quiet engine. It is almost riding like a 300cc motorcycle now. Once again, we are getting a U-turn. Let's try to pull it a little hard. It almost has 140 in the fourth gear. So that's what it is. It's not that freaking powerful 650 cc motorcycle. It's very beginner friendly, and I hope you have noticed it that the part delivery is like very linear. It just takes its own sweet time in getting into the part. So let's talk about the suspension. The suspension is set onto a softer side, more inclined to city riding conditions where we have lot of potholes and humps on the road. In that way, I'm really happy that the suspension takes all the speed breakers and everything without giving much pressure to the rider. To talk about the braking, the braking is kind of uh, okay. That's what my feel because if you are coming from a, a 200 cc or a 300 cc motorcycle, then probably you will find that the braking is good because again, a beginner friendly brakes. You need that on this kind of a heavy motorcycle. If you have a very sharp brake and uh, you're upgrading from a smaller capacity motorcycle then probably yeah the brake locks and dropping and all those things can come so on this one uh, that that isn't a problem but if you are already riding a 1000 cc or a 650 cc motorcycle and you come onto this motorcycle you might feel that the braking bite is little less uh, i don't say the braking is bad the braking bite is little less because for every other 650 like like other kawasaki 650s or honda 650s the braking is like very sharp when you just flick it you will have an intimidating kind of a braking bite but on this one it is more friendly but very beautifully it stops in i was using the engine braking and the front brakes alone to manage this motorcycle i was not using the rear brake at all and when you look from a city riding point of view uh, the most thing that you need is gear shifting so the clutch is little harder like until now i think i have ridden around 4 or 5 interceptors by now in all of the interceptors what i see is that the clutch feel is little hard so if you have to shift a lot you will start getting slight pain on your left hand The gearbox is like I don't have any complaints on it. It's like a typical uh, Royal Enfield gearbox. The same feel that you get on a 350 or a 500, and uh, no false neutrals under now. I probably would have ridden around 400, 500 kilometer by now. You see that this is what I told. The braking is good, along with the engine braking, it does a good job. Let's pull it once again.
Seriously, the fun on this motorcycle is like 4 to 5k RPM. On the highways, it's like 120, 140 easy. And to talk about the seating comfort, I'll just stop and talk about that. I have a few observations to tell here. Maybe I'll just pull onto the service road. So look at the seat. This seat is like long seat. It's unlike any other Royal Enfield seat. Generally, Royal Enfield makes wider seat. So in my observation, if you want to do weekend rides or city rides, this seat is okay. But if you're going for long tours, I feel that you might need a wider seat. This theory applies not for everyone. What I'll say that look at the mirror and uh, see your back. And if you feel that you are more attractive from the back, then you deserve a bigger seat on this. Because you see that the seat is long. It should have been a little wider so that that gives a comfort if, if it was having that Thunderbird seat or something very similar for the rider as well as pillion. And uh, the length of the seat is more in fact. Probably a typical Indian mentality can fit three people on this motorcycle but just kidding don't do that. What I'm telling is that the seat is long so the pillion will get more space. So if the pillion wants social distancing you can have it on this motorcycle. You have enough amount of space like this but not that broad that's my point. Yes let's talk about the heating issue. So I, I really got a chance to ride in uh, peak traffic. So when you buy this motorcycle, you have to expect the heating of a 650cc motorcycle. Uh, any 650, when you're buying a bigger capacity motorcycle, you should expect heating. Uh, it doesn't mean that when you buy an affordable motorcycle, you, you can expect a heating of a 200 or a 150cc motorcycle. So it does heat up, not that bad. And it, it doesn't push the heat to very awkwardly to your body parts. Uh, what I feel is that the heat actually goes under thighs. So that's fine, that's perfectly fine and you will feel only it when you are riding inside city but if you are on the highways then perfectly fine, I was not facing any issues on the highway inside city limits and I was riding on trousers then yeah, a squid life. So then I was feeling that yes it was having a little bit of uh, my heating and I wasn't surprised because I have ridden all 650s in the sense CBR 650, Kawasaki 650s and also I know how badly it heats up uh, inside city. Yeah and finally uh, this motorcycle comes on road for 3 lakh 17 thousand rupees. Bangalore. So in my opinion, it's like a very value for money machine because where can you find a 650cc this much engaging, uh, calm and relaxed motorcycle for that kind of a price. So definitely a value for money machine. But you have to think about it, okay? Because sometimes I get this question that whether to buy Himalayan or this one. In my opinion, the, that question itself is invalid. I'm not making fun of the people who are asking that question. But I'll tell you one thing. You have to buy a motorcycle for your purpose. If you feel that you need to take the motorcycle everywhere, like on road, off the road, and city, take it everywhere with all the luggage then probably Himalayan is the best choice uh, you might love the 650 engine but if you come to this kind of a motorcycle probably your dream will be always to go to an adventure motorcycle so start with the Himalayan no problem I mean if you are considering Himalayan definitely adventure is there in your blood go and buy it you'll start developing that taste but if you are coming on this, this one this is more a road focused motorcycle the price point shouldn't be a constraint in buying a motorcycle that's what I want to say as per the showroom few people are getting somewhere from uh, 26 to 30 or 32 kilometers per liter even on highways which is like a very good mileage figure for this kind of a motorcycle when I was doing it I was getting uh, 26 to 20 on highways and somewhere from 22 to 25 on city limits that's pretty much decent looking at the kind of performance this has and one an amazing thing is that I really got surprised to hear the service cost of this motorcycle the service center guys told her it's somewhere around 2000 rupees and that too once in 10,000 kilometers I was like seriously blown away with that data so I went and googled it and I found that most of the people were paying 2000 to 2500 for the general service it's like the general service okay no parts change and all but the oil change and the labor will cost you 2 to 2.5k that too for 10k kilometers and it's like a truly an affordable motorcycle in terms of buying it as well as maintaining it I, I don't think you can maintain that cheap on a 650 not even a 650 come to the 300s you won't be able to match that figures at all that's what my personal feel okay so let's see who all can look onto this motorcycle if you want a good motorcycle for your city where there is less traffic you have uh, moderate traffic then you can put in the third gear the third gear like takes this motorcycle everywhere you don't have to shift a lot if you're ringing it fast then yeah probably you have to shift otherwise third gear will take you everywhere inside the city and uh, secondly if you want to tour on the highway as I told if you feel like having a broader seat you should go for that otherwise like this seating setup is okay and uh, yeah tag your luggage is no problem uh, just make sure that the luggage is not touching this deck exhaust pipes and uh, I don't really suggest this motorcycle for off-roading so these are the uses that I see for this motorcycle so your decision should be based on that and uh, what I'll suggest is that 
don't just go with a view always ride a motorcycle and get the feel about it and see whether you can control this bar control the weight of this motorcycle the height is okay ergonomics is okay then only go for buying the motorcycle and that's it i hope this video is useful for you and as always show some love in the form of likes and comments see you in the next video until then bye bye